second derivative. And then in terms of x and y. So that right there is the important part in terms of x and y. So when you get done, your second derivative can only have x's and y's in it. So if your second derivative has a y prime in it or an x prime, it wouldn't have an x prime, but a y prime in it, you're going to have to replace it. Your final second derivative can only have x's and y's, okay, in terms of x and y. Okay, so we're gonna start with, and we'll do a relatively simple little equation here because I, I want you to get the steps more so than doing it with a complicated derivative. Okay, so x squared plus y squared equals 25. So we're just gonna do a nice little circle there. Circle origin at zero, zero, radius five. All right, now we're gonna clearly identify our steps. All right, so our first step is going to be find first derivative. Okay, so we're going to find first derivative. And when you're doing this, you're going to label all your steps for me. Okay, so this is going to be one of those where you're going to have like three or four steps. And then if you memorize those three or four steps, you're going to do the first step and then do the second step. And then at least that will guide you as to what you're supposed to do. All right, so first derivative is not going to be too bad. So we'll show the notation d dx of x squared plus y squared is equal to d dx of the 25. Okay, taking the derivative with respect to x on the x squared is just going to give me a 2x. When I take the derivative of the y squared, because it's a y term, I got to slap that chain in there. So 2y and then y prime. Derivative of 25 is zero. Okay, so good so far. Okay, we'll solve for y prime. So we're going to move that 2x to the right hand side. So 2y, y prime is equal to a negative 2x. Why divide both sides by 2y? So y prime is equal to a negative 2x over a 2y. And then can I cross some things out there? Yep, I can cross out my twos. All right, so I can conserve on paper here. My first derivative is negative x over y. All right, so that right there is my first derivative. Okay, I gotta figure out where I'm gonna go on my paper to make this neat. Yes, Dane. So if it's just a nice x squared plus y squared equals um, something like that is the derivative always going to be negative x over y. Yeah. And I know my answer I'm working for. <laughs> yeah, but what happens when I change that original equation? I could make it a nice little simple equation that's not a circle. Right. Well, wouldn't that change this here then a little bit? Yeah, see, so even if I put some coefficients in there, it, it'll change it a little bit, but basically, yes. Because remember when we did this from a graphical standpoint yesterday, I had a four right here, but it was a circle at the origin of four and it, that was still the derivative. Okay, all right, now, after you find first derivative, because the whole goal is to find second derivative, so we're gonna find second derivative. So that's step number two. Well, we won't, we won't scare you off yet. Let's just do this one at a time. <laughs> All right, so second step is find second derivative. Okay, now that means I look at that first derivative and then that's what I'm taking my derivative of. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show them what I'm doing. D dx, I'm taking the derivative of the negative x over y. And that's just a nice little quotient rule, right? Nice little quotient rule. So y, times the derivative of the top, which is negative one minus the derivative, uh, or actually a top function, so negative x, times the derivative of the bottom, 
Now, derivative of the bottom is a y, so it'd be one, slap in the uh, chain, so y prime. Everybody agree with me there? All over y squared. Okay, and then we do a little bit of simplifying. All right, let's uh, make it a negative y. This will be plus right here, plus x y prime all over y squared. Now, technically, if, well, but hang on a minute. If I did not have that on there, if I just said, find the second derivative, didn't I just do that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, now the thing is though, I have found the second derivative, but they want it in terms of x and y. I've got a y, I got an x, I got a y squared, but I also have a y prime. I can't have a y prime. So this is my second derivative, but I'm not done because I'm not in terms of x and y. Okay, so I'm gonna come up here, do it this way for our next step. Our next step is going to be substitute for y prime. Yep, I'm going to substitute because I want to get rid of it. So I want to substitute something in for it. Okay, so this is the next step. I'm going to substitute. Okay, now where do I where do I know what's equivalent to y prime? Um, negative x over y. Yeah, I know what y prime is. Okay, so I'm going to write my second derivative under here just so I see all my stuff here. So I've got a negative y plus x y prime all over y squared. Okay, so that's the second derivative. Okay, now I'm going to substitute. I don't want to use pink. Let's do yellow. This right here, I'm going to get rid of, and I'm going to replace with what it equals. Okay, so then I'm going to have a negative y plus x times negative x over y all over y squared. I'd probably clean this up before I tried to do anything else. So negative y plus, I didn't need a plus there. It doesn't really make any difference. Let's make it a minus since we know it's going to be a minus. So it'll be minus x squared over y all over y squared. All right, now in pre-calc, what did I make you do over and over and over and over and over? Multiply through by that least common denominator because this is a complex rational expression. I don't want a complex rational expression. Okay, so I'm going to multiply through by what? Y? So I'm going to multiply through by Y. I'm going to multiply through by Y. So this is our LCD, which is Y. We're multiplying through by that LCD. All right, so I can come down here. I'm going to have a distributing there, a minus Y squared. The Y's will cross out minus x squared, that's pretty tacky, all over y to the third. Okay, now technically, do you have a second derivative now that is just in terms of x and y? I do. However, they like for you to go just a little bit farther. Okay, they like for you to do just a little bit farther. They like for you to substitute from the original equation. Okay, now, take a look at this. Negative y squared minus x squared. Look over here. Don't I have an x squared plus a y squared? So these are really darn close, aren't they? Could I take out a negative? Yeah, you did that in your head, darn you. Okay, so take out the negative one right here. If I factor out a negative and then rearrange the terms, I would have an x squared plus a y squared all over a y to the third. I'm definitely running out of colors at this point. Right here is x squared, y squared right here 
is x squared y squared. So I can substitute from the original problem. So let's put uh, substitute from original problem. And actually at this point, I do wanna go ahead and put a box around that because technically that was a second derivative in terms of X and Y. Okay, now I'm gonna write there, I'm gonna go negative X squared plus Y squared all over Y to the third. All right, this is the last step. So if I'm gonna be consistent in my coloring here, let's go ahead and make this pink because that would be the last step. All right, and we said we're substituting this. And what does what, x squared plus y squared equal? Just a 25, right? So then could I have negative 25 over y to the third as a final, 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 final answer? All right, and this is the answer that your book wants. All right, now technically in terms of X and Y, I just eliminated the X's, but technically this would be in terms of X and Y. All right, I, in the past, we, I usually put one of these on there, a couple of these on, on a test. All right, if you can get to here, I'm gonna be really happy, okay? Because that means you understand the process. You've taken the first derivative, you've taken the second derivative, you've substituted and got rid of the Y prime and you got down to here. Now, this one was really obvious as you could really see an x squared plus a y squared in there just by factoring out negative. Sometimes looking at this and trying to come up with something to substitute from the original is, is, can be challenging depending on what that original equation is, okay? So in the past, I have just stopped here grading and give extra credit for this. If that's the case, I will obviously clearly mark that on the test, okay? And if it's a more challenging one, I'll probably do it extra credit. If it's a pretty simple substitution from that original, then I will probably require you to go all the way down here. Okay. But we're.